So let's um, take a moment to fully arrive in a room wherever we are sitting and take a few deep breaths. Become aware of sensations of our body uh, sitting on a chair or wherever we're sitting. We'll start with a short loving kindness uh, meditation. So once we feel we're more or less settled, we can start and generate a feeling of loving kindness or warmth and just send it towards ourselves for whatever difficulty we may have or struggle we may experience. Just wishing ourselves well, acknowledging any issues we might face or anything we're struggling with and also all the good things in ourselves. And then once we feel we've generated this energy of uh, embracing and accepting, we can also imagine somebody dear to us, um, maybe somebody going through some difficulty and send this feeling of loving kindness and warmth to this person, wishing them well. and sending out this energy to a wider circle, maybe also people we don't know who are going through difficulty and challenge, sending them our well wishes, our loving kindness and our warmth. And then finally, sending the same feeling to any animals that we feel or might feel connected to, um, that we feel might be in pain or struggling, 
physically, emotionally, in any way that are going through hardship. Any animal or group of animals that comes to mind that we want to send our loving kindness to. So welcome again, dear friends, and thank you for joining on this, depending on where you are, misty or sunny uh, day. Um, and um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to share today about um, compassion towards animals. And uh, thank you all for joining. Um, and uh, we're only a small group. So uh, although it's being recorded and uh, um, it's going to be put online later, um, but uh, this will give us the opportunity to uh, uh, make it more informal and uh, yeah, more interactive. Um, so um, uh, our friends on the panel get the opportunity to share about their practice with uh, their diets and their livelihoods uh, around it. And then um, I also invite other people that have joined to share uh, what brings them here today. Um, so I put on the um agenda that would be two hours but that was just a very we don't have to do two full hours as it's a small group maybe it'll only be an hour and a half um depending on how much everyone has to share um so first we'll just do a round of uh introductions um and then i'll ask some questions and then other people can also ask questions uh and everyone can share um so I'll briefly uh, introduce all the uh, panel members. Um, oh, um, so um, or maybe everyone can just briefly introduce himself in like uh, just one minute, um, one or two minutes. Um, and also the ones, also the ones that are just joining, if they feel like, can also introduce themselves uh, as it's a small group. Um, so maybe uh, Astrid, you want to start? Thanks, Jess. Dear Sangha, hi, I'm Astrid. Very nice to meet you tonight and practice together on this beautiful uh, cloud dharma hall. Um, yeah, I'm actually Indonesian, but I live in but I live in Shanghai for the last couple of years. I've uh, been practicing with PV for the last, I think, 14 years. Uh, yeah, for the last 14 years. Um, so pre I'm actually a serial entrepreneur for the last 17 years, always in uh, about food, nutrition, and healthcare. 
that they got some point in my life where I always feel conflicted with what the, with the things that uh with my livelihood back in Indonesia. So when I moved to China, I was like I was um, very inspired to very very grateful to have a second chance of uh, another uh, another new beginning to to live here. And that time I was thinking. Yeah, I'm gonna make a livelihood that really, really aligned with the ethic that I believe in, the the ethic that Thai has always been training us, all of us with. Yeah, that's pretty much about me. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Astrid. So Astrid um, practices with the, the Wake Up Sangha in Indonesia, and she um, works. Uh, she founded the uh, plant-based meat company. Uh, based in uh, Shanghai um, and for all the uh, if you're interested in any of the um, of the panelists all their uh, details with their websites it's all on the on our website um, so uh, next up uh, Paisu would you like to introduce yourself okay um, hi everyone I I'm Pei Su from Singapore. Um, I yeah, I've been practicing with uh, Wake Up Singapore for about like two two and a half years. Uh, yeah, around there. And but then I was introduced to Buddhism a lot earlier when I was like in my teens, like about fourteen. So so that is like just over I think about eleven years or so now. Yeah, so now I, I uh, yeah, I, and then being Buddhist like has uh, inspired me to become like vegetarian initially. And then later on, I became vegan, which I can share more about that later on during the panel. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, and then I'm, I'm working as, at a, as a video producer at uh for this uh vegan app called a billion so it's a lifestyle app that helps people to find vegan options all over the world but a disclaimer is that i'm just speaking from my own experience i'm not representing the company there was something that i had to be very that they were very particular about yeah uh, i'm yeah i'm working as a yeah freelance video producer i'm not full-time there yeah but yeah. That's what I do now. Yeah, I can share more later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paisu. And thank you for representing your wonderful, compassionate, generous heart and practice with us. Uh, just a fun fact, she's been vegetarian since she was 15. And uh, after, only one year after she started practicing when she was already 14. And then later she also turned to being vegan. Um, next. Um, I'm kind of going from uh, east to west, uh, from where we are in the world, um, is uh, Anake. Would you like to introduce yourself? Dear friends, uh, my name is Anneke. I am 32 and I live in the Netherlands. Um, I've started practicing with the Wake Up, local Wake Up Sangha in 2012. So that's been a while now. And um, for a couple of years, I was also involved in the Wake Up Netherlands, organizing retreats and so on. I've uh, also visited Wake Up in New Zealand, which is actually where I became interested in veganism. I grew up on a partially vegetarian diet. Uh, my mom was quite uh, interested in that and she cooked a lot of organic vegetables and so on so part of that I, I brought with me from my childhood and then some um, inspiration came also from the Plum Village practice and from uh, meeting other Wake Up people. Um, I live with my boyfriend uh, who I also met through Wake Up and we've been together for almost six years now. Um, I'm a vegan vegetarian chef by profession since Three years, three and a half actually, almost. So I can share more about that later, but really excited to meet you all and um, enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you, Anneke. So Anneke works uh, independently and her project is called uh, Lovingly Wholesome. Um, it sounds very uh, nutritious in many, many ways. Uh, next uh, is uh, Tos. Tos, uh, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Tos. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Anneke, uh, for preceding me. Um, Anneke and me are almost neighbors, if you look on a world scale. <laughs> um, I'm Toos, I live in Ghent, Belgium, and uh, I have my business, uh, and under the name Toos, plant based food, I share recipes, vegan recipes, but I also am specialized in vegan food photography. So uh, I only take pictures of vegan food, and um, I do that for magazines. I'm going to shoot a book for somebody soon. So all kinds of reasons why people need pictures of vegan food for companies. Um, and I came to veganism um, through my values. And I felt that getting more and more informed about the uh, what I call the food reality uh, that is out there, I felt more and more that I didn't want to keep eating dairy and uh, meat. And I think I've started practicing with Plum Village, I don't know which year, but I, th I think it's five years ago, more or less. And uh, I think hearing, hearing about the five mindfulness trainings definitely helped me to finalize, you know, that internal process of deciding now I'm fully, uh, I eat as vegan as possible. We're never perfect, but uh, trying to be uh, very um, uh, careful of what I eat. So Plum Village definitely has helped me in that process. Thank you, Tos, and welcome. So uh, Tos has practiced with Wake Up Ghent, which also helped uh, set up. And now she's part of the UMF, which is kind of like a, a formal, informal coordinating body for the Wake Up in Europe. Um, and then uh, our final uh, guest on the panel is a, our guest speaker, um, not directly related to our Sangha, but very much, uh, I feel, to many of the things we practice, although he himself might deny that. <laughs> um, but uh, is my dear friend, Jamie. Jamie, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie. Um, nice to meet you. Apologize for the shaky surface. My best connection in my home is on my bed, so it's a little bouncy. Um, yeah, uh, as, as Jazz mentioned, um, uh, I don't have it. He's my connection to Plum Village, and <laughs> probably my, my strongest relationship to Buddhism is through him. Not to say that it's not a topic that I've consumed, but uh, I'm a lifelong deterministic atheist, um, though many people describe my my thinking and my outward practice towards the world as very, very spiritual. Jazz is one of those people. Um, so I am currently in the United States. I have been back here for about two years. I spent about the better part of 10 years uh, in India, which is where Jazz and I became friends. Um, and I, like everyone here has essentially said, try to live my values. Um, I have put them in a framework, which I call holistic veganism, but the term is, is moot. I don't think labels are all that necessary. I just use it as a way to um, help people package it um, and it centers around intersectionality and interbeing. Though if I'm talking to more of an Eastern audience, I might use the terms um, sadhana, seva, and ahimsa. Um, and I can elaborate on how I use the term interbeing, um, you know, later later on. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll all have time to you know deconstruct the way that we we view these topics and. Uh, I'm happy to be here and to meet you all. Thank you. Jazz, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Welcome, Jamie. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I see we have a few other friends who've joined us. Maybe they just want to very briefly 
share uh, their name, where they're zooming in from, um, and uh, yeah, very briefly, the reason for being here today. Um, if you're not comfortable being on the recording, you don't have to. Um, but uh, yeah, please go ahead uh, and, and introduce yourself. It'll also give us an idea as to uh, what direction we want to take this uh, panel. Hi, my name is Gogo. I live in the UK and I'm a vegetarian myself, so that's why I'm here. I want to understand more about veganism. Thank you. Welcome, Gogo. Thanks. Yeah, very nice to be here. Hello, dear friend. Um, can you hear me okay? Oh, great. Um, my name is Eileen and I am zooming in from Ireland. Um, and I'm here because I'm super interested in everything you're, you're all doing. So I'm really um, looking forward to learning about all the different projects going on all over the world. Um, and I myself uh, recently, uh, uh, until October, until two months ago, I, I spent one year living in Plum Village and I was volunteering on the Happy Farm in Lower Hamlet. So yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, my name is Octavia. I'm uh, currently in Jakarta, Indonesia. And yeah, I started to uh, uh, I'm I'm uh, learning to be a vegetarian for the past one year. So, uh, but for the vegan itself, I'm still learning. So, yeah, I I hope I can learn more about vegan today. Thank you. I realize I haven't introduced myself, <laughs> kind of rude of me. Uh, so I'm Jazz. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm part of the Wake Up International. I help coordinate Wake Up International and uh, have been part in other forms of Wake Up Belgium and my hometown Leuven, although I'm more international these days. And um, yeah, personally, uh, it's all Thai's fault that I'm here, I guess. I didn't know about veganism and then I came to Plum Village and I started living there and then I just became vegan by accident <laughs> because we only had vegan food there. Uh, but then yeah. after leaving Plum Village, I yeah developed a deeper interest for it and I went to live in a vegan community, another vegan community. Um, so I thought it'd be nice today to uh, yeah hang out with some vegan friends and get to hear everyone's story uh, and uh, interests. Um, so if anyone else wants to briefly introduce themselves, please uh, go ahead. Hello, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me. I am Brother Fapte. I'm currently based uh, in uh, Plum Village, Thailand. But now I'm in Indonesia for some time because of the, the pandemic. 
I cannot return to Thailand. So I just uh, hang around with you guys and support my friends. Uh, see one of my friends, Astrid. <laughs> oh, well, uh, looking forward to, to listen uh, from you. Uh, thank you very much. Shirley, on one, one, would you like to introduce yourself? Nobody home? Uh... Okay, well, if at any point you want to share anything, uh, please uh, feel welcome, but then uh, Lady, let's listen to a sound of the bell before we uh, go ahead. So, for our, uh, I have a question, same question for uh, all our friends on the panel and you can you can elaborate a bit more now uh, so um, you've all decided to um, first of all well uh, follow a certain diet um, a vegan diet plant-based diet so what led you to this and not only to just have this as a diet but even like base your livelihood upon this so please um, yeah elaborate on how this all came to be um and um yeah any of you five uh, uh can start um i can start um okay so um yeah so as um as i said earlier i came to buddhism when i was 14 so it was at the end of the year that i joined the buddhist fellowship singapore the youth group and i just felt that it was very meaningful so um what happened was that um the next year it was a few months later about march yeah um i i attended uh, my first meditation retreat like it was a youth group uh, and and then just during the, the retreat, that time it was being held in a temple that was all vegetarian. And then um in the and then we did a meal reflection and which said um that new something said it was something like new numerous beings were were sacrificed for this meal. Yeah, for, for this meal to be possible. Yeah, and then it was it felt like the first time I was uh, very I was like reflecting on the source of my food and then like I it really hit me that it was a vegetarian meal there but then they um but then they already said numerous beings were being sacrificed and at that time I was um I was a meat eater and yeah so it really dawned on me that I, I just felt that I a, a switch flicked in me that I couldn't see I, I couldn't unsee this like uh, every time I eat meat after that, I will feel so guilty. And then I'll just think that that's like a sentient being. And yeah, at that time I was, I was really, really young and it was really hard to start out because like my parents were against it and they were worried about you know, nutrition and you know how to cook for me and I uh, most of all my my late grandparents yeah because we ate with them very often and yeah they the older people have like a more fixed kind of mindset yeah and I really didn't know if I was gonna make it but I I managed to after about a month yeah actually another thing that inspired it was um, I went to see an exhibition at that time 
um, it's called Body World. So they actually display uh, human cadavers um, and then they display them alongside some animals. And I felt that um, underneath the skin, humans and animals are all made of flesh. So we actually look quite similar in terms of like the muscle mass. So that also like kind of dawned on me that I, I just felt that it just was didn't feel right for me to eat animals. Yeah, and I mean, it was really hard starting out and yeah, I had a lot of weird, awkward situations. And, but then I feel that it was really one of the best decisions I ever made, especially something that I made at such a young age, something that I decided for myself if, um, and even when other people were were saying were you know against it and all that but I still decided to do it because it was like to me it was the right thing to do yeah so yeah and then it, it kind of led me to places and like I mean it increased like my confidence and all that yeah because it was that at least I made a decision for myself that you know there is like in line with my values and I used to be very scared of animals like cats and dogs like when I was growing up like I really didn't know why but it just like freaked me out to be seeing like some non-human creature then after that after I I stopped eating meat I um I kind of that fear kind of slowly subsided because to me, subconsciously, yeah, no, like, I think people say things like speciesism and all that. It, it's like, I mean, when I see other sentient beings, I think subconsciously, you know, there's something that didn't feel quite right. Yeah, even though it's not those that, um, those kind of livestock that people consume. But after that, I feel that I could make peace with, you know, my surroundings and like other sentient beings. I, I just feel that I cannot practice um feel at peace and you know practice mindfulness and all that without feeling guilty that you know I'm making choices that indirectly harm other living beings but of course it's different for everyone and like my family is still non-veg after all these years and they are all Buddhists yeah but um yeah it's it's uh different for everybody then it was only later on when I was uh, 22 that I I went uh, vegan. It was seven years after I went vegetarian. Yeah, um, yeah, I had been thinking about it for some time. I thought, why not go all the way? But I didn't really dare to, to investigate about, you know, the, the horrors of the factory farming, the dairy and egg industry and all that. I didn't quite dare to do that until I, I, I made the switch. Yeah, it, it was kind of spurred by when I went overseas to... Europe. I went, I did a student exchange that year in the UK and I thought of trying it there, but it was kind of on and off. Yeah, I was kind of like, yeah, when I was cooking, I was vegan. But after that, um, when I was traveling, it was more difficult. Then it's, it's only when I came back, then I uh, joined the Singapore vegan community. I, I was kind of thinking whether I should give up the whole idea, but because I found other people who were doing it, and they could do it and I found out things like oh like how do you give up cheese or how do you like or what do you do during uh like is somebody's birthday and the cake is not vegan then is it rude of you like not to eat the cake and that kind of thing yeah so I found out these these kind of things from the people and then I yeah I felt quite empowered so I yeah I managed to make the switch to vegan and I am so 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 glad that I did yeah so yeah, basically, you asked us to share our journey, right? And then, is there is there anything else? You uh, we'll no, we can we can move on. Maybe yeah. I'll come up yeah, I think with some extra questions uh, yeah. later. Um, All right, thank so, you. Sorry for my long sharing. I'm kind of nervous to do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, maybe next, uh, Astrid, maybe you wants to share for about five minutes about your journey uh, towards uh, veganism. Thank you, Jeff. So yeah, my first uh, my first encounter with veganism was actually on my first retreat with Thai. It was around 12 years ago, I suppose. I still remember we were in Colorado at that time in the US. And then uh, that 
that's where we try to eat uh, vegan. I try to eat vegan food at the first time, you know. And to be honest, it doesn't taste good at all, you know. Um, it it tastes horrible, uh, to be honest. But the but the reading of the the reading of five contemplation before we eat, then it really struck me. You know? I really love the idea of veganism. I really love. I really believe in the idea of veganism. Even my daughter turns into vegan when she was as little as ten years old, after one of our retreat in Plum Village, Hong Kong. But I still cannot be a vegan. Uh, why? Uh, so I always. I uh, that time I was just a vegan when we have a retreat because, especially if it is in Plum Village, because the. I think the, the nuns and the brother and sisters there are cooking very well. So the taste of vegan food there are extremely delicious and it's okay for me. For me, having a tasty food is extremely important. I cannot stand, uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be very cheap. It can be very simple, but it has to be very tasty. You know? My relationship with uh, my relationship uh, my relationship with pleasure of from tasty food is actually very addictive. It's like having an addictive relationship with cigarette or with um, alcohol or whatever, but I just cannot stand bad tasting food, cannot at all. You know? And most of the time, vegan food doesn't taste good at all. You know? Even though I know, even though I know the typical Chinese uh, Buddhist, Chinese Buddhist smoked meat, but it doesn't, it doesn't enough to convert me into vegetarian. I'm a mother with a vegan daughter. Uh, so I have all of the reason uh, to be a vegan, but I just cannot because it doesn't taste good. You know? So, um, so, and then around two years ago, I have to move to China. Uh, oh, sorry. So around two years ago, I have to move to China. And then uh, I was thinking what kind of livelihood will I make in China? You know, this is my second chance. And this is my, my really, really like a uh, white paper for me to draw from zero. You know? Uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of enough with the kind of living that doesn't align with what I believe in, with what I'm trained on through both five mindfulness training and 14 mindfulness training. Every time I recite the five mindfulness training about, uh, li about reference for life or on about making the right livelihood, I always feel guilty inside myself. Like what I'm doing here, <laughs> I'm reciting this, but I'm promoting alcohol. <laughs> uh, that's that's before I moved to China. Like I'm doing this, but I'm promoting alcohol lots. I'm reciting the trainings, but I promote everyone to kill to kill pigs and then have a good food from that. You know, what I'm what am I doing? I, f I feel like I'm a big. I, I feel like I'm such a loser. You know, and I feel like that's that's very wrong actually. You know. But uh, I know that, but I have to make a, li a livelihood anyway. You know, so yeah, just just do it at that time. So yeah, when I moved to China, I was really really thinking, what is it that I'm going to make? You know? um, I know vegan uh, veganism will be my way of life. Uh, I will make a living from that. Uh, but what was the product? Until I met, uh, then I met uh, the the modern plant based meat value. If I can mention the brand, things like Beyond Meat, Impossible Foods, and so on, and I think that's perfect because the taste is perfect uh, as a foodie, as a gastronomist. It it tick the pleasure for me, you know. So yeah, that's that, from that. Then I'm I'm very inspired to make plant based meat, you know. Uh, only because uh, I know many uh, now veganism now many people realize eating eating meat is not good for our health as well as our our planet's health. But to give up meat is not as easy as one to three. You know? So I I was thinking if I can make a very good product a very good uh, plant based meat product then first I am happy because I get good tasting food for my everyday life. Second, I will be able to help more people reducing their meat consumption easily without suffering. Uh, why would we reduce our meat consumption if we feel suffer? Then that then it's like very contradictive for me. Uh, 
We want to we want to we want to be good, but we feel so much suffering within ourselves. Yes, at the end of the day, we will be happy and so on. I know that, but still, the process will be too painful. Yeah, that's why I'm very excited to build my new company. Um, our name is How Food. How How means good, and food means food. It's like it's a good food, a good food because uh, it's a, it's a good food because it's tasty, it's nutritious. Uh, very nutritious. It's healthy for both ourselves and then our planet. And most important, it is ethical. And most important for me, whatever what we whatever we take from every single step of the business that we're doing, I know it will help our Mother Earth to heal rather to hurt our Mother Earth. That's where I'm taking off from. So thank you for listening. Thank you, uh, Astrid. And now we're going more in the gastronomical uh, direction. Um, maybe uh, Tos, would you like to share about your uh, your journey and how you came to uh, your current relationship with uh, food? I'd love to. Um, my journey. I was thinking well, when I read the questions before that I don't actually remember every step anymore, which means it went very gradually um which worked very well for me i think uh and from my beginning 20 i never really liked meat as a food it, it was okay sometimes but i never really liked it so that helped and then from the beginning of my 20s i started seeing more documentaries meeting people who uh, ate vegan um and starting to, to understand and it's this understanding that really helped me what actually happens to animal, except for when, when you eat them, but also in the dairy industry. And um, for me, it was really a process of combining values and actions that went very slowly, uh, finding uh, alternatives and um, also being kind to myself, allowing myself the process uh, of uh, coming almost uh, or eating almost a fully vegan diet. Um, and as I said, the five mindfulness trainings really helped me in that. When I went to Plum Village for the first time, I had a general feeling when I, the five, man, five, my, five mindfulness trainings were read to me that finally somebody had written down what I truly believe is the North Star, you know, as they say in Plum Village. So for me, discovering that everything I hold in my heart and I think is important was written down somewhere and other people practice it too. It meant the world to me. And it also gave me uh, some mental support, feeling like I'm not alone uh, in wanting to practice this. I had some friends eating vegan, but feeling that this community was there and just the community being there, I think pushed me you know, that step further to uh, fully research uh, and, and go into veganism. Um, so I, that's why I can't tell you how many years I'm, I've been eating vegan because <laughs> I don't have a date. <laughs> it didn't go from one day to the other. Um, and I'm very lucky that I met my partner in Plum Village who also eats vegan. So that's a very nice uh, help that we do it together. And it's also like a mini sangha that way. Um, and then it evolved into my business because uh, I love cooking. Apart from veganism, I love cooking. Uh, uh, it brings me joy. If I have a day off, like in my holidays, I, it, it happens it happens anyways that I'm in the kitchen half of the day somehow, <laughs> every time. So um, uh, I was looking for a job because I worked for businesses, but I was looking for a job that gave meaning uh, that would help the world, even if it's drop by drop. And so the cooking and uh, I, I studied photography, the photography and the vegan food came together in what I do now. So um, yeah, it was a gradual process, but also, again, I think the same way as you can follow the five mindfulness trainings as a North Star, what I do for a living is also a North Star. Um, it became you know, more concentrated as I practiced. And as I said, no to clients that didn't do vegan things. And it was also a practice of saying yes to things, but also a practice of saying no and finding that niche uh, um, in my work. 
Thank you. Let's uh, have the sound of the bell and uh, catch our breath before we go on to Anakin. Floor is yours, Annika. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you all for sharing so far. Um, I feel really um, a bit overwhelmed because <laughs> I really don't know um, anymore what to say in five minutes. Um, so for me, I'm very, very grateful at the moment that I um, make my living doing something that feels right and meaningful. Uh, I heard some of you say that before, and it's been uh, quite a long journey for me to arrive here. Um, I was a history student, um, very much an intellectual for many years. I was always kind of living in my head. And then after several years, I decided I didn't want to live that way anymore, but I didn't know what else. So that was actually around the time that I was introduced to Wake Up. And um, and yeah, somehow I felt there and, and not even in the in the five mindfulness trainings, but more in the in the people that I met, a kind of um, a new way of living more based from my heart rather than from my head. And this is how kind of many doors opened for me. Uh, uh, one of which was um, um, uh, the topic of uh, environmentalism um, activism and also uh, vegan veganism. Um, as I said before, I, I was kind of familiar with eating vegetarian. Um, but um, the relationship between uh, vegetarian and vegan eating and caring for our planet and not taking uh, more than what we actually need um, was something that really uh, uh, hit me as something very meaningful. And um, um, yeah, I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but uh, this was something that for me um, changed my way of looking at yeah, our, our planet and, and also at my role in the world as a as a whole, because I was I was somehow I was also always trying to like perform well, trying to do what I was good at, which was um, many things to do at university, at school. I was always kind of doing very well, but I wanted to be out there in the world doing something that that meant something to me and it also meant something to other people and to to the environment. So um it was it was kind of a philosophical philosophical crisis for me in a way I think and then um, I uh, I quit my studies in the end well I, I did I did finish my um, masters but I, I quit the PhD uh, that I was uh, kind of starting and I went to travel and I met some wake up friends on my travels and and then suddenly I started reflecting more on what do I actually love doing? What kind of make, gives me energy? What makes me happy? What makes me feel connected? And that was also when I started reflecting on how much I love cooking. Because every time I cooked for other people, I felt like I could connect to them in a way I was never able to do in other ways. So this was like a click that, that I didn't know how to... Um, Turn this into a livelihood, but I knew that when I reflected on my, on me, I I want to do something with cooking. And I, for a couple of years, I put it back in the back of my head. I didn't know what to do with it. I started working at some companies. The jobs I had did have to do something with um, the environment, uh, with um, food and uh, uh, sustainability. But I knew some point in my life I would come back to the cooking. And then, yeah, at some point when I was uh, out of a job, 
um, and found myself living in an eco community where there was a large kitchen, uh, large dining tables. I just uh, thought um, um, three and a half years ago, I'll just throw a community dinner, uh, all vegan, because I was almost vegan by then. And, um, and the first time 55 people showed up and I thought, oh, this is actually something people want and, and I'm able to do it. So I just went from there. It was kind of spontaneous. Um, and at the same time, yeah, what I tried to explain just now in the past minutes, it, it was kind of developing somewhere under the surface that I would cook for people and just had to find the, the, the right moment to start doing it. Um, so in the course of two, three months, um, I built kind of like a weekly um, vegan dining thing with about 50 to 60 people eating uh, my food every week. And I took another big leap and started my own catering company, which I've been doing for three years now. And I mainly cook vegan food because I think it's a really nice way of um, um, kind of uh, challenging people to try new things and actually liking it, um, uh, which is my way of, of um, helping people transition to more sustainable diets. Um, uh, but uh, I also cook vegetarian food sometimes because some of my clients and especially the um, businesses that I sometimes uh, cook for, uh, sometimes a vegan diet is a, kind of like a one leap too far. And then um, uh, we make a kind of a vegetarian deal. And then I take the freedom to cook a lot of vegan food anyway. Uh, I just call it vegetarian. It's kind of how, how, it, how I roll. Um, yeah, that's uh, maybe it for now. I look forward to any questions and um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Annika, for sharing this wonderful story of getting lost and finding new meaning. Um, okay, last but not least, Sir Jamie. Uh, thanks everyone for everything you shared so far. Um, it was about a, a week before my second birthday when I saw a plastic bag spinning in the wind. And that's when I went vegan. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, my atheism, which I mentioned earlier, is, um, is it's really a, a critical portion of, of my identity. It's a lifelong understanding uh, how I see the world, um, accept the world, and I, I think its role will, will, will spell itself out, or I'll try to spell it out. Um, I learned about veganism in high school. Uh, Jazz was very kind when he wrote the description about this, and he said, a, a panel of young people. I'm 42. I mean, I'm properly middle-aged. And within the last year or two being back in America, um, I, I was kind of Jazz's weight when I was in India. And so, um, I, I look at it and I am it and I feel it and, um, but uh, so going back in time, uh, in high school, a friend of mine approached me um, about being vegan through, uh, in America, the, the hardcore scene. I know this existed a bit in Europe as well too, and the straight edge scene. And, and, and part of my choices in life, I've been sober my, my entire life, um, despite living a life that you would by all accounts think that that probably didn't apply. Um, and this is again, the, the atheism. Uh, it's, I have one brain, one life to live. And this was also a, a large portion of why I uh, chose environmentalism as a child. Um, a child in the eighties when there was a very large environmental campaign going on and it, it all made sense to me, just like the, the sobriety did. Um, life is precious, it's short, um, and it should be taken care of. So speed ahead a few years, I'm in my early 20s, and I'm working in a very supportive environment. Um, a vegan girlfriend, best friend is vegan, somebody hands me a book at the time uh, called Diet for a New America, which 20 years ago was the vegan Bible. There, there, you could, there were not, uh, there was not a shelf 
in a bookstore, even an independent bookstore for vegan books 20 years ago. It's amazing how rapidly this has all changed. And the smallest portion of this book, because a fa fairly large book, was the environment. So I read about animal welfare, I read about human health, and then the, the last section just hooked me where I already identified uh, um, as an environmentalist. And I realized if I wish to have integrity to that term, then I need to do that. And integrity played a, also a critical role going forward. Um, repeatedly asking myself, does this match uh, what I feel, what I value, um, as well as what I project towards other people? Um, so I went vegan and uh, it was rather quick transition. I, I would say the first year, I, I had always told myself I wouldn't be vegetarian. I would only be vegan because I understood it's the same cow that you eat, that you drink, that you wear, that you wash your hair with, that you polish your floor with. So it was one or the other. Though that first year there were several um, cheats, if you want to call them that. Um, but eventually that lifestyle reinforced itself. Again, I lived in a very supportive environment. I lived in a city, had availability of food, social life, friends that felt the same way. I, I couldn't begin to identify with somebody that lives in a culture, a family, or a rural area where this is really challenging and isolating thinking. Um, as well as I've always been an incredibly confident person too, and that, you know, makes things easier. Um, and I centered my life more and more around this, this uh, environmentalism, the veganism, um, and eventually went on what was supposed to be a bicycle trip around the world ended up in this community in India, which I joke that they made for me. And that helped to, that, that space in particular and the people who founded it, it's called Sadna Forest. And it's the Rosen family really helped me to expand on things that I was already living by or one step away from living by um, in order to have more integrity with what I believed. And eventually I came to realize all of those hinge on the concept of, of nonviolence. And I think they're all synonymous. Um, I think feminism, environmentalism, um, compassion, they're all synonyms in a way for nonviolence. And I, I believe veganism to be an umbrella term that can encompass all of these and much more. So I lived in this community and uh, I began to self-identify a little bit further with what was already inside of me. There were never great, any great epiphanal moments or, or right turns uh, in, a, in a shift in identity. It's a pretty constant progression. And uh, eventually, as, as I explored the topic intellectually and academically more, um, which is something that I like to do. I'm not calling myself an academic or an intellectual. I don't think I follow the protocol for either of those enough. Um, I started to use the term ethical vegan. Eventually I came across the idea of intersectionality. It had been around since the eighties, but I didn't know that. And I realized, wow, here is a term that truly describes what I'm already thinking in the workshops that I provided in our community, um, where I would spell out to people all of these different areas in which you might find your personal connection to veganism. Are you uh, anti-capitalist as, as I am? Are you a feminist? Are you an environmentalist? Um, are you concerned about you know, uh, air quality and use of oil? Are you concerned about any number of things? And I would provide resources and materials and also try to consume all of these topics and help people find their foundation because there are so many ways to connect to this and without a foundation, you, you might not stick with it. But eventually I also found that ethical veganism and um, some of you may be familiar with total liberation, they both tended to be too academic um, and, and just missing something in, its, in, in their totality, even though one uses the term total liberation. 
because for me, veganism began to also represent um, adoption or um, child-free living. Uh, it began to involve um, speech patterns. Um, of course, it relied heavily on the sciences, on, on psychology and, and biology and so many other things. Um, and this is where I came to describe how I thought as holistic veganism, because it's a, really a holism of thought and action. Um, and to use the terms uh, intersectionality and interbeing. And for me, interbeing is a strategically chosen word, meaning I come from this deterministic uh, atheist perspective, but I see things as a result, see things all things connected through, through biology and, and um, the laws that govern the universe. And at the same time, many people come from a spiritual perspective and see things as all, all connected. Um, so it, it became a, a really good all-encompassing term to um, speak to each person to help them connect the dots. And I continue to connect the dots, um, meaning I see it as an endless journey um, to raise your awareness, to raise your compassion. I, I like to, I, I don't, I don't, maybe in the long, long run, <laughs> The answer is to, to go back to nature, but that's certainly not the trend right now or, or the comforts that I'm addicted to. Um, so uh, aware consumerism, compassion, applied these lenses to all portions of our life. Um, I personally have abstained from a salary since 2009. Um, I do think drugs and alcohol should be legal, um, but as they continue to be illegal, you know, the cost to the environment, as well as to people of um, uh, different skin colors than my own being um, victimized heavily by that. Um, all of these things are connected um, and they're all connected to my veganism because no one is separate from the other. Uh, humans are part of the animal world. Right, so if veganism is for the animals, that has to include the human animal and actually caring for the human animal is the best way to re reduce their ignorant uh, or negligent or desperate uh, attacks on the environment. Um, you know, somebody doesn't, most people who kill gorillas outside of the trophy hunters from America and maybe Europe and the, you know, 1% of the world um, kill gorillas because they're desperate. So why don't we, help them. And, and the cornerstone of all of that, um, from my research and other people's research is um, empowering women. It's, it's really the, the main element missing. So sometimes I think I should give up all forms of, of talking and discussion related to this and just focus on uh, uh, women's rights around the world. But for me, um, I, I speak from what I know. And, and for me, I, I cast a broad net. And the only thing I want to catch in my net are, are people and their thinking, and I want to harness it all together that we use our different commitments. Somebody else relates better to speaking to women in a village that wouldn't want to hear from me. Um, uh, somebody else uh, knows how to, you know, empower Iraqi uh, ecosystem so it gets away from oil. You know, who knows what? Um, so yeah, I I tend to be broad in my thinking and in my action. Um, but it all, there's no true altruism either, you know, it all comes back to this is what satisfies me and, and if we were really to go down the deterministic road, it's all faded in a way, but not in an omnipotent way. <laughs> but we won't go that, that's a whole philosophical, you know, we're not going to go there today. Uh, so I, I hope, I hope that was clear. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jamie. It was it was very clear, but also gave us lots of things to think about. Uh, in the, uh, um, so thank you for that. Um, and so this the second that brings us to the second. I have two main questions for you. For uh, the second main question is yeah, how does um, veganism for you all connect with um, your practice, your your spiritual practice, your mindfulness practice, or um, for the deterministic atheists uh, uh, here or anyone really in a more general sense, how does it relate to other things that we find important uh, in life uh, or in the world? Um, so yeah, all of you can can uh, um, can share maybe each five minutes, then after that, about five minutes, then after that we'll have a space also for questions 
uh, from other people that are here. And before we start, I just like to, um, I also posted it yesterday on our social media, just quote briefly the, the five mindfulness trainings. So the five mindfulness trainings for those who are not familiar with them are kind of the ethical fr framework of our uh, community. And in the first mindfulness trainings, which, um, you know, is based on the this original idea, which is very deep in Indian spirituality of nonviolence, ahimsa, which uh, Jamie mentioned, uh, and which we call we call the training reverence for life. And uh, I'll, I'll read the beginning very briefly, so that it can be like the the intro for this uh, section. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I am committed to cultivating the insight of interbeing and compassion, and learning ways to protect the lives of people, animals plants and minerals. I am determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to support any act of killing in the world in my thinking or in my way of life. Um, so please, uh, dear panel members, um, if you want to elaborate on this or take this question on from an entirely different perspective, um, go ahead. Could you properly articulate the question again I'm, I'm not saying you did it improperly but um just state it one more time uh so how does veganism relate to your spiritual practice or more in general how does it relate to other things or values uh, or practices in your life that you find meaningful or important um which you already kind of started answering <laughs> but uh, yeah Bowing in. Okay, so I can start since just now I started. Um, yeah, hope I don't miss out things. But uh, I think it's quite a holistic thing, uh, veganism. I think just now, as Jamie mentioned, it's linked to so many other things. There is like um, the practice of uh, non-violence and, you know, like not harming. Like ultimately, a lot of things all boil down to you know, like not harming and, you know, preserving others, you know, whether it's our earth or other people, or animals. So, um, yeah, and then he also brought up some very good points, like, um, like humans are also animals. So I feel that veganism, um, yeah, it's also... Is like is the practice of compassion. So it's like it extends to compassion, yeah, towards other living beings, towards and towards ourselves a lot. Um, yeah, and towards other people. Because um I think a lot of things can happen like um which is that vegans because you know we feel so strongly for the animal rights and all that and not a lot of people we we feel very angry that you know that oh why why is all these things happening why is there destruction to the earth why why are people killing animals then why is it that the animal industry is so destructive but people you know still continue to eat meat and all that like some people love have a lot of pets and they love their pets so much but they still enjoy eating meat and then you know to to somebody who is vegan sometimes it's, it's hard for us to um to connect that kind of thing and then yeah i i've personally struggled with that a lot and i've i've also asked questions about it at plum village and then i'm slowly kind of coming to i i, I kind of drew some of my own conclusions about this so it's basically that everybody is uh, has different condition. Everybody has a different stage. So um, right, even if we grow up in the same household, we are from the same family. Like my family members have still been eating meat all these years. And sometimes I do find it hard to wrap my head around like um, around these kind of things. Yeah, so yeah, it's that everybody is where they need to be at and everybody has their own, you know, concerns and their own stresses and their own problems. So, so it's also like being compassionate to, to other people, being understanding towards other people. Wow, wow what am I saying? It's, 
is is like um how do I put this like it's like you understand that not everybody has the capacity to still you know worry about bigger issues because they have so many you know pressing issues and concerns in their life so yeah it's it's like I think one talk I attended said that everybody is kind of where they need to be at, like given their, you know, their situation, like everybody is that way because of their uh, situation and all that. So like sometimes vegans, you know, with vegans feel a lot for the animals and then, then they end up getting very upset about, you know, people who exploit animals and all that and then they they get into arguments with people and that kind of thing and then yeah sometimes it becomes about like it becomes about a person's ego and all that like it can it can easily turn into yeah into things that's uh that's not very positive mm, and it can be very like alienating for for other people so yeah, so that's something that I really try not to, to fall into. So actually something that happened to um that I encountered recently was that um yeah there was a, a vid yeah I basically make a comment on YouTube about um about veganism and yeah it was it was just like a comedy depiction of some vegans in a very stereotypical way and then I was just saying that you know I'm vegan and it's very funny and you know I, it's it's like vegans are really not all like this and all that yeah and then I and then I ended up you know getting encountering some comments from people who really hate vegans and um yeah, and some people were were basically trying to debate about like how you need animal protein and all that. And yeah, there were some people who made comments that uh, directly attack vegans. Um, then there was also like vegan people who were trying to like argue back and prove that point. And, and then the more that they did that, then the more people say that, you know, like vegans always yet on and on and on. And that's, that's why I cannot stand them and that kind of thing. So when I see this kind of thing, right, I really don't like to get sucked into it. I don't like to, to go into debates and all that. So actually, yeah, it depends on how they're set and, and the situation. But I, I actually ended up making a comment, something like this to, to the person that kept going on about, you know, we need we need animal protein and all that. You know, I, I say that, you know, I, I send, I always send resources, I'm very scientific and, you know, like I, I base things on evidence and all that. So I say, like, you know, there's, uh, I give a few names of some of those world-class athletes who thrive on vegan diet. Then I say like, if you really want to go and see, you can go and see the game changers because they are very, scientific they do a lot of experiment they interview a lot of people and like show proof of how the vegan diet can enhance the athletic performance then i say i'm not i'm not trying to argue with you you know or, or say that i'm right you're wrong i i find that the kind of dualistic kind of argument is is just very polarizing to people so i i just say that you know i just share some evidence you know based on something to me that you know is very logical and it makes a lot of sense and then it's up for other people to draw their own conclusion it's like you know if they if they really think that animal protein is necessary for uh, for humans to thrive then then i i think like i mean that's that's their own opinion also and like everybody's entitled to their own opinion so we also like respect other people and like respect like diversity of uh, opinions or so. And then when when it comes to this kind of, um, when it comes to vegan diet, like it's like you're trying to practice like non-harming. So it's like the practice of compassion and all that is very, you know, it can extend in so many ways. So I think one thing is also that, you know, nobody is perfect and, you know, sometimes we sleep up and you no, know, sometimes I, I worry about things like, oh, am I not vegan enough and that kind of thing when they sleep up. Like for example, you you order a dish and then 
okay, then you you ask them to veganize it, like you tell them like, oh, take out the cheese, take out the mayo, that kind of thing, like you're trying to order a burger, and then they serve it, and then they put cheese inside, that kind of thing. And then sometimes, like for me, I might just, I might just go ahead and eat it rather than like, you know, throw away the food and waste the food, since, you know, most of the part of it is, is vegan and yeah it's, it's just a bit of yeah but then it's already been mixed in it won't make a difference to the animal oh okay um yeah so um sorry um yeah so then also like not not being so hard on myself la, for for making mistakes uh cultivating compassion oh my Hey, oh, so so many things. Sorry, it's so hard to. It's sometimes a bit hard to con conclude all. Um. Yeah. Then like cultivating, like it's like I think cultivating this journey as like a, as a form of like joy and abundance. And then like you know trying to to cultivate this practice of compassion is like not just to animals and outward form, but a lot of these things ultimately practice come back to internal. And then you know how you feel about yourself, um, yeah, and you know your your state of mind and your inner peace. So I think ultimately, whatever you do, right, you should do it joyfully. You don't go and do it until you're so angry and you're so stressed and all that. You know, then whatever you do, no matter how good is it, like you do environmentalism, lah. But then you handle so many projects until you're so stressed. And then you don't give off a good vibe to people around you. Yeah. So ultimately, I think whatever you do, you do it happily and, you know, with, with abundance. And, you know, I treat this veganism as, you know, something positive to, for, for yourself, for others. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not depriving myself. I feel a lot of abundance in my choices. Yeah. Sorry if I if I went on a bit long, but yeah, thank you for listening to my sharing. I, I just had a lot of things on my mind, a bit hard to organize. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pesa. We'll, we'll just have to do another session to share more, <laughs> uh, I guess. Um, so uh, let's see who's up next. Maybe Astrid, do you want to share about um, the, the interbeing nature of uh, practicing uh, veganism? Thank you, Jens. Thank you, Pei, for your very deep and emotional sharing. Appreciate your appreciate your uh, openness and honesty uh, and being uh, to all of us. For me, the benefit from uh, well, I don't have any logical some, I, I don't have any logical uh, ground for this or whatever or I don't have yeah. But to keep it simple, every time I start. Uh, practicing the plant-based living, I feel much more happier. Of course, happy is a state of mind. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes it's not. But because I practice this living, um, now I become much more skillful in sustaining my joy and happiness. I don't know why is it. So I don't know what is it. I don't know why I don't have an explanation for that and I cannot explain it as well. But because I now, uh, because now I, the term of non, not killing, uh, now that terms become broader for me too. Not killing is not just about killing the animals, but killing somebody else living but maybe killing somebody else's perception, somebody else free of will to think or things like that. So uh, everything is very, everything is very natural actually. The moment we give up, the moment I give up, I, the moment I, uh, I break up my relationship with me mindfully, and then suddenly my life become happier as well. Uh, the moment I kill less beings, then suddenly my life becomes happier as well. Do I feel angry to those who still eating meat? No, not at all. Because I understand 
that's it's not as easy as one two three but the most important point for me is now i able to sustain because of that the choice of life that i took because i practice that more often now uh i I able to sustain my happiness better. I able to sustain my joy better, and I able to share that to more people. That's most important for me from the practice of the practice of uh, plant based living. I wouldn't say myself already vegan, no, because sometimes I still eat egg. Some uh, as there are some moments I still I still cannot resist butter and cheese. <laughs> There are some moments that I that I also uh, still use my old makeup where I know it is not vegan vegan products. I still have the old products from my old lifestyle <laughs> where I know it involves killing, you know? but I didn't throw that away too because I know when I throw that away, then it's gonna be a waste. Then that that is another cycle of that is another cycle of uh, of uh, hell. So better cut it slowly better cut it uh, mindfully that more sustainable now is more much more important for me one important insight that i learned by not killing and by does not support killing by be more mindful with what we consume help me to be a happier woman to be a happier wife a happier mother a happier person and hope that i can contribute better to the living in this life. Thank you. Thank you, Astrid, for sharing your uh, joy and happiness with us. And uh, yeah, I don't know who feels called to go next to answer our question, but uh, please go ahead. Difference. Actually, I feel um, a lot of joy listening to your sharing, Astrid, and a lot of it resonates with my own experience. Actually, um, to my surprise, I suddenly saw this connection you make in me too. The um, the 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 taking less and the and the contributing to less killing uh, actually does make me a happier and more joyful person. It's not like I'm happy all the time, of course. There are different states in all of us, but it does, it does. And it's a very um, wholesome source of happiness, I think. Uh, of course, there are other ways of enjoying life that are less, are less wholesome, but are uh, sometimes providing joy in a very short, um, um, in, in, in a very direct way, but this, this always provides me with a, a sense of of very deep enjoyment and very deep happiness because i i, I feel like i yeah i can live life more deeply it, it's more meaningful to me that, so that's a very a very deep source of joy and happiness and i do see um how that has affected me and those around me as well and um it's also a way of me hoping to make a contribution to a more beautiful world uh, because because I, I see for myself that people who are so frustrated with things that are um, uh, causing suffering uh, that they lash out to others and that they uh, uh, they take on a very negative uh, uh, perspective to the world and to those around them um, that also creates a lot of additional suffering so I feel it's my way uh, to try to live a balanced life and um, my livelihood helps me in that sense and it also uh, why i for instance choose uh, to be a caterer and a cook is also because i love working with my hands it helps me keep me grounded and in my body and in and to be in touch with nature in a very direct sense i touch the vegetables i touch the other uh, spices herbs and and things that i work with and it gives me a feeling that I'm part of something uh, bigger. And, and that's also a source of joy for me. Um, and I didn't share it before, but for me, it's still difficult to uh, uh, eat completely vegan. Um, 
And I, I think I'd like to share with you guys how I've been practicing with that, because I, in a way, in my, my mind and my ethics and my, uh, like, knowing is that I want to, I want to contribute to as little suffering as possible. On the other hand, uh, I've had an eating disorder in the past, uh, and um, I caused myself so much harm with that, that I, at some point when I started to practice meditation, I, I also made a commitment to myself to not turn my meditation practice into another thing I would hurt myself with, or like push myself or like be very strict, because that's also a way that I can, uh, yeah, can create new suffering for myself. So I've, I've tried to practice a lot of um, a patient with myself and being really kind of focusing on all the little things that I do do that make a difference instead of like rather focusing on those few moments that I sometimes um, yeah I'm still tempted to uh, maybe that's also why I uh, felt so connected to your sharing asteroid that I sometimes am tempted to eat a little bit of cheese or egg and um, rather than kind of punishing myself for that I, I try to just smile at myself for being uh, human and having some moments of seduction <laughs> in a way and then I look into myself and I see that I, I, I do so much and I get up every morning trying to uh, contribute to a better world and I just say like yeah you go ahead and um, and it's okay and it's also the way I connect to people around me I have a lot of people around me who um, eat um, vegetarian food part of the time. I don't know if it's a Dutch thing, but there are a lot of people who call themselves flexitarians, where they kind of don't stop eating meat completely, but they do switch to uh, um, vegetarian uh, meals a couple of times a week. And I actually am very appreciative of that because I think if you look at it on a, on a world scale, like every person uh, making the choice to eat one vegetarian meal uh, whenever is already a step in the in a, in a, in a beautiful direction. So I that's also how I see my livelihood that I provide people with an alternative, a tasty alternative, and they can choose to eat it whenever they like. And if they want to know more about uh, vegan food, uh, then I'm happy to tell them about it. I also started doing a vegan cooking workshops, which I really like online. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's just for me. It's it's all kind of steps in the right direction. I'm happy to be a part of that, um, and and on a large scale, uh, contribute to less suffering. Thank you very much, Anneke. I, I see Toz already bowing. Uh, please go ahead. My heart is so warm because I recognize so much. <laughs> Thank you for your sharing. Um, very recognizable. So uh, for me, the practice is about compassion to oneself and the world and others and leading with compassion and basing your actions on compassion. That's a lot of the practice for me personally. Um, and so veganism is certainly a way to do that. Uh, and for me, one of the main ways that is very practical in my life, in my um, livelihood, as all of you. And um, yeah, what I really enjoy a lot is sharing, not only doing it for myself, not only taking the pictures of vegan food and part of taking pictures of vegan food is showing because people are very visual. So showing that it's not it looks good, it looks tasty, you know, it's beautiful. Making things beautiful makes it more accessible to people, to me. Um, or I noticed that making beautiful pictures of food really helps for people to think, oh, I might want to try to cook this, you know. It, it's not, it's, it looks delicious. It's, it's not less than meat or less than what I'm used to. Um, and so, um, yeah, you have the pictures and then, um, I also enjoy a lot sharing uh, the, the compassion through my communication online. I might spend a bit too much time on Instagram, 
but <laughs> but it helps because I get I don't know I don't have that many followers in the, if you look but I on a daily basis I get messages like ah this is so recognizable I want to get to know veganism but I don't want the hardness and the 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 it's all or nothing kind of way you know I want to want to find places to discover it and those places are definitely already there in the world but I'm, I'm so happy when I get interactions and messages from people um, that are interested and feel safe in this online environment that I get to offer in work online workshops and after COVID physical workshops and uh, my photography helps in that and my communication so all the elements are basically the same as what you guys are saying is being allowing people to have their pro process being kind uh, to other people being understanding of people who ask me for the thousandth time like what do you eat then if you don't eat you know meat and cheese do you actually get to eat delicious food <laughs> and so but approaching all you know all these questions as uh, or with kindness and compassion and 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 see people even in their resistance you know melt away because they see that it's beautiful and i, I get they get to taste that it's delicious and yeah uh, so for me i think this is my livelihood is the most concrete uh consequence of my practice which is like the 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 basis for for this work uh next to how i i i uh, try uh, to be as a partner in a relationship of course and you know the other things i do too but so yeah, it's very, uh, um, and I think it's very important and I'm very happy to hear that you're doing this from all over the world because uh, when I got to know veganism, you have a lot of online groups and Facebook groups that often uh, are, they are not so kind. And, you know, they have, uh, or here in Belgium, they're not very kind. If you just eat one gram of egg, uh, you know, you're the worst person in the world. That's the reactions you kind of get. And I really, really uh, decided like, okay, that's not something certainly I want to be part of, but I want to do the opposite. And I feel like we're here with a number of people who are actively all over the world um, sharing, sharing a way, a positive way, a way of abundance. I heard that's a really nice way to say it um, in a very, very positive, welcoming, kind way with a lot of understanding towards everybody's journey. So thank you. You're making me very happy this afternoon. <laughs> Jazz, would you do me a favor and restate the question? Only because as people speak, I, I really try to listen to what they're saying and, and not listen to my thoughts. And um, I have a sense of the question, but it helps me if you say it again. Sure. And I'll, I'll give you an extra. I'll give you sound of the bell okay so great. we can uh, catch our breath so <clears throat> The question, we've gone off with this question in many different directions, which is very interesting and exciting and we could do many more sessions, but <laughs> the basic question is, uh, so how does veganism uh, relate to other values or practices in life or in society uh, that you find important? Um, so how is veganism not just an, or maybe it is, but I'm sure it's not in your case, not just an isolated part, but how does it connect to other mm -hmm. Uh, important things. Okay. Um, well, first, I want to say um, I really appreciate um, the, the different voices in this panel. Um, many, many times, uh, if a topic is veganism, um, 
first, of course, it draws people that are interested in veganism or, or making their veganism more concrete, but um, it's often seen as, you know, this pinnacle, this mountaintop, and it's not. It's just a, a step in a, in a journey of compassion or aware consumerism and, um, you know, it'd be interesting to live long enough to see what uh, comes after veganism. Um, and to, to have all of us with our different um, stages along that journey, I think it's, it's really great. And I think every panel on veganism should have people that are not fully there yet. And, and, and the thing is, I also wouldn't say I'm fully there yet. I haven't willfully eaten an animal product in, in almost two decades, uh, but there's so much, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm currently um, wishing to give up white sugar again. Um, I am trying to get organic palm oil out of my life. Um, I've gotten out the, you know, non-organic palm oil out of my life. Um, so there's no, there's no end to it and there's no true veganism, you know, that's, um, it's just a goal. And, and that's how I see it. So um, to, to go to the question of you know, um, how does it influence or manifest my living? Um, eventually I came to understand that um, for me that it represented um, nonviolence, compassion, and that that in fact was the goal, not veganism. Veganism is the tool. Um, veganism is, is the, the talking point to connect all the dots. Um, but the actual goal for me, um, coming from that environmental perspective is sustainability. It's symbiosis with the planet to, to shift from being a um, parasite, which is how the human race currently behaves, to a steward. Um, and it served for me as as the years went on and, and I explored the topic further and further as um, poss possibly also the best tool for taking um, personal responsibility, which is you know a, a tenant of most philosophies and, and religions around the world um, and, and the ownership for your own life. So it's very, very empowering. Uh, the more you take responsibility, in fact, the more liberated you, you become from your suffering. This, this again is, you know, I know that a lot of this relates to Buddhist thinking and philosophy, which is why jazz is always so insistent that I'm a Buddhist. Um, but it's, it's just cause and effect. You can call it Dharma, you can call it any number of things. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought, but um, yeah, the, the, the empowering of personal responsibility for me has been so liberating. And, and when I think about those terms, animal liberation, environmental liberation, women's liberation, class liberation, liberty, there's freedom on the other side, not freedom in the American sense of like entitlement, <laughs> as we saw three days ago in the news, um, freedom in the sense that you, by taking responsibility, you unburden yourself. This is my experience. The more responsibility I've assumed for my life uh, and the world around me, actually the less burdened I've become. Though, of course, it's a really dangerous slope as others have touched on. You can for lose yourself in that and become nihilistic and, uh, and, and self-harming. Um, fortunately, this never really occurred for me the two years in America, my opinion on humanity is the lowest it's been in a long time, maybe ever. Um, pretty soon I'll have a baby in my arms. No, I'm not going to be a father, um, but I'm, I'm moving to live with some friends in Hawaii and, and, uh, and babies are super restorative, just like petting a cow or a dog, you know, so. Um, so yeah, the, it also for me um, helps with humility. Um, knowing that I, veganism is not, as I said, like a, a mountaintop, it's not a pinnacle, it's not the podium to stand at. Um, knowing that I ate meat for half of my life, that I continue, everything that I consume has a story. The, the laptop I'm talking to, were the, the, the heavy metals were mined by families that are uh, indent, essentially indentured slaves. 
Um, so I, how could I possibly be better than anybody else? Um, and, but veganism helps me stay centered on that, uh, that, that form of relation to others, uh, other humans, um, uh, to know that I've got nothing over them. Um, I just have taken these steps with the opportunities, privilege, and knowledge that I have in my life um, to create less harm. So I find it incredibly liberating and it's, it's guided everything. As I said, I, I haven't taken a salary since 2009. Um, I see capitalism as just such a detriment to the planet that um, since I have enough opportunity and privileges and confidence to manage through this life without centering it around the amassing of wealth, that is in no way a judgment of anybody else who has to make their ends meet and, and finding their happiness and their different livelihoods. Um, I, this is where I have found my contentedness. Um, so it, it really has shaped everything even if it's been a, a constant progression. And in fact, I've now centered my life. So I live a life of voluntary service, a life of seva. And my preferred way of doing that is to give talks on these um, understandings that I've accumulated in life, how I, how I see the world and um, hopefully get people to relate to not me per se, but to how they care about it in ways that will lessen the impact on the planet. Um, but my seva comes in all forms, you know, going to Hawaii, I won't be giving talks. I'll be working on a small farm and helping raise some children. Um, here it's taking care in New Jersey where I am right now, um, uh, 92 year old woman and, and my parents, you know, wherever I go, wherever I go, I wish to be of service and, and veganism is, is truly the cornerstone of that. And that's why I started to call it holistic veganism. But again, titles don't matter, my name doesn't matter. It's just connecting those dots of how to be of most use to the world without hurting myself and hopefully contributing to the shifting of our thinking toward uh, as being stewards of the planet. Um, so it, it's the full centering of my being really. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie and all the panelists for all your very touching and insightful sharings. Um, so we have a small 15 minutes uh, left. So maybe we can take uh, maybe two or three questions from the audience. Um, so this time, not all of you have to answer the question, just one or two people who feel called can, can briefly answer any question that is asked. So if you would like to ask a question, you can either post it in the chat or uh, you can uh, yeah, you can unmute yourself and uh, and share. So um, while well, people are, are if, if uh, people, well, people are thinking, I also have a question. I don't know if anyone, I have a very burning question, which I've had for the past month <laughs> and I don't have an answer to it is, and it sounds kind of funny coming from me, um, but why are uh, four out of the five people on this panel women? <laughs> that i mean i selected i so i mean selected i i but it was very hard for me uh somehow to to find uh, uh men who uh, have lives livelihoods based around veganism I, I i went outside of our sangha uh to to find one um so i don't know maybe i'm biased uh, that can be my own bias that somehow i only want to be surrounded by women or maybe there is something else uh, at stake here uh that um somehow veganism is I, I see Astrid and Jamie are very eager to answer this. So, uh, Astrid, please. you go first. Well, my answer is very simple. Usually, women are more sensitive, uh, so they go they go into more 
it's easier for women to convert into veganism. But if you if you want to find um, gentlemen, male that is vegan, let's find it in the gym because usually they're there. Usually they're the bodybuilders. You usually there. <laughs> oh, that, that's why I don't know any. I never go to the gym. <laughs> Then it's very easy now. Now, now, days and days, I find more and more and more bodybuilders, athletes turning into into vegan because they think that the protein from plant actually better from rather than the protein from meat. Uh, so, so yeah. If we want to find, uh, uh, so for me, if I want to find a uh, a male who's who's also a vegan, the easiest way go to the gym. That's all. We we got lots there. <laughs> I would second all of that. Um, uh, using the the animal rights, the, the research on the animal rights world as an example, um, it's predominantly uh, built by women, though men, in particular white men, continue to hold um, the the loudest space in it. Um, I don't carry white guilt. I don't carry male guilt, though uh, I fully recognize that I end up just being another white American guy, um, not necessarily with a loud voice in the sense that I want to talk over other people, um, but I'm a confident speaker and so forth. And uh, yeah, it's a small burden. It's it's not guilt in all those classic ways. Um, so the, the loudest voices of, of the biggest organizations in the West, um, the spokespeople and the founders, um, statistically are more men, though the, the body of work uh, and the people embracing it um, are largely women. Um, and this comes with its own set of, of conflicts because it's often men too that go on to be um, the majority of things like the ALF and ELF and um, you know breaking into buildings and um, you know what they call liberation, but really um, hurting the small people that work at those places or um, violent acts. I, I'm not a big fan of direct action in most forms. Um, so. Yeah, it's a lot of what Astrid said. Um, there, there's more space in particular in the West for women to um, uh, be allowed to embrace their emotions, to express their emotions, to acknowledge their, uh, um, their relationship to other things, uh, whether it be the fact that they can be mothers uh, or just the fact that they were actually allowed to be sisters and share with each other, whereas men are encouraged towards bravado, even if we're seeing a shift in these things. Um, and it's a, it's a total frustration, though it's changing. And I, 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 I totally see the arc of humanity, if we didn't kill the planet beforehand, um, going towards stewardship and where um, men and women have much more similarities than our cultures currently allow. Um, and it is happening and we can see it within the different vegan communities, um, but it is uh, absolutely a frustration and completely statistically real and, and valid. Okay, thank you for uh, your answers. Um, yeah, maybe one or two more questions uh, from the listeners or if, if you guys have guys now i say guys <laughs> you people have uh, questions for each other that's also fine i have one quick question for um if that's okay um thank you so much for all of your sharings it was really inspirational and i was just wondering if on your journey towards really right livelihood, um, did you ever encounter kind of um, much fear with that or, well, kind of, I suppose, the experience of deviating from the norm or the safer option or your perceived expectations from others? Um, yeah, thank you so much. Can I answer this question? Um, yeah, you can. Um, I, I was thinking I got something to say also, but you can go first. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, please go first. Huh? 
Oh, okay. Um, so, so basically the question you're talking about, you know, fear of, you know, deviation and like being unable to, to align your values, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, because I think from a young age for me, I've always had very firm values and like I'm just fresh out of school for like, yeah, just over two years. Yeah. So, so like I was always very worried about you know find um about finding the right path because I'm uh, I'm trained in creative field so I felt that a lot of things that people do is is like you know like driving driving consumerism and craving like 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 doing advertising to advertise for for stuff people may not need or doing like games that will be addictive to people. Then I was very worried whether I can find something that aligns with me. But I realized that actually somehow along the way, like it will just fall together. Like because I think my conscience tells me that I, I cannot do some things. Like I cannot be working like for a company that promotes fishing equipment, for example. Yeah, because there is like humming uh life la. so so like i just listen to to my own gut and then and then somehow my own inclination to attract you know people that are like-minded and all that and somehow like opportunities just happen la. yeah so just like stay true to yourself and like never force yourself to be what you're not yeah you can uh anaka you can go next yeah i am done yeah, thank you, Aileen, for your question. It really resonated with me because, um, yes, I have been experiencing a lot of fear uh, surrounding my livelihood, and it had to do with two things. And first, it was uh, first of those was that I was really afraid that doing something different as an entrepreneur uh, wouldn't give me enough money to kind of. Um, yeah, make a living off and keep me also uh, emotionally happy. Uh, and secondly, uh, I was really also in some instances afraid what people would think, people around me. Um, and actually, it 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 it, it did um, influence uh, me for a while. I think I could have started my business sooner if I hadn't been so scared. Um, looking back, I see that uh, there were a few things that I did that helped me overcome those fears. And um, uh, uh, most importantly for me was to surround myself with those that I did feel comfortable with and the people that did um, look at things a certain way. So kind of like allies or, or friends on the path, uh, I would say, and and even I, yeah, well, I have been lucky enough to find uh, uh, my best friend and, and my boyfriend to be from the Wake Up Sangha. And they were really, really supportive for me at many times, uh, really encouraging me to go through the fear and, and focus on having faith and supporting me in, in many different ways. Um, but also going to the Sangha really helped me to kind of know that um, there are a lot of people trying to live differently and we're all doing it in different ways but there is kind of support here uh, and i think you could find it different places of course but that's been really um, important for me like doing something scary or something different deviating from the norm is, is like finding people i could trust while i was doing that and also i did have the experience to look into what I really needed for my livelihood and um, uh, really also trusting that I could uh, make do with less and also that if I really needed something kind of I had some experiences with that I didn't have money but I did get what I needed emotionally psychologically or whatever at the right times uh, even without having money uh, which was really important for me to kind of have the faith to lean more into like this unknown path of building a business and not knowing what I would make uh, in terms of uh, a livelihood. Um, and so that was kind of what I wanted to say to you. Yeah, about that. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for your questions and your answers. So um, yeah, time's time's up. We've we've uh, raced. I mean, for me, time has flown by. Um, so I don't know if anyone has a really urgent question there. Some of us have to leave. I don't know if anyone has a real urgent question they want to ask uh, that we that you feel unsatisfied or unhappy. If uh, we end like this, please ask it. Um, if not, I'll end with some ending uh, remarks. Uh, I don't have a question, but I wonder, will you give us a moment just to um, conclude with each other to say, uh, you know, our regards to each other? Yay! As well. I'll never let an opportunity pass by to say how much I love you, Jamie. <laughs> Do you want to do that now or after you, you want, you'd like to close with your statement, right? Uh, yeah, but let's uh, see if anyone has any burning question. Um, no? Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I want to, uh, to thank you all for coming. It was very, I feel very nourished um, by all the sharings and I'm very happy you all came and shared. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in a moment, all of you can, can say your goodbyes. Before that, I just want to have like a few uh, practical uh, things. So we'll um, uh, post this online tomorrow or the day after on our YouTube channel. We'll share it on our social media and on our website. Um, and so this is part of kind of a series. Uh, we did uh, in, in December, we did this session on uh, sustainable farming. Um, which was called uh, Farming for the Future. And then next month, uh, we plan to do a similar session on forestry, Forest for the Future, it's a very original name. Um, so in a similar vein, uh, if you know anyone that has anything with forests and planting trees, we're still looking for people to be on the panel. Um, and um, also tonight we have, uh, we're doing a few online events with Wake Up International uh, because many people are in, in lockdown. And, Three hours from now, we have our weekly Metta, Love and Kindness Meditation. Um, I'll, I'll post a link in the chat. It's every uh, Saturday evening. Um, depending on your time zones, you'll be able to make it or not. Um, yeah, and then uh, please, uh, now is the time to say your goodbyes and thank yous and, and whatever uh, you, uh, you want to say, Jamie. And uh, thank you uh, all so much for being here. Dear friends, uh, I have an appointment now, so I'll be leaving already. It was very nice to have you all here, and I hope to meet you preferably one time in real life, but we'll see, <laughs> and if not online. But, uh, nice knowing that you are out there. Uh, have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Okay, now that she's gone, we can really get into it. No. Um, uh, I wanted to say thanks. I had a great time. I'm really happy to meet all of you. Um, instantly feel a connection. Please be in touch socially or, or professionally. Um, and uh, this also applies to anybody who watches this video in, in the future, if you have any questions. Um, I hate selling myself, it's not a business, but um, if you look up holistic veganism, uh, in most accounts, uh, uh, social networking, you'll find me. Though there is one guy out there who has um, some very similar and different points of views, um, but you'll visibly be able to see the difference between the two of us. Um, and yeah, congratulations on what everybody's doing. You're all doing great things and I'm really pleased to have heard your stories and your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I really, really appreciate all your sharings and like there's so many lovely insights and like I love like just being part of this kind of community that is so open and so insightful and Jimmy, in particular, your sharing about holistic veganism is so interesting and I, I feel that I have a lot to learn from it. So 
I'll probably go and read up on it um sometime after this. And it will be lovely to to be able to connect with all of you in, in some way or another. Yeah, but this this has really been very beautiful and some things have really inspired me a lot. Yeah, so thank you very much. I really appreciate a lot, all of you. Jess, thank you so much for arranging, pulling everything, every of this really, really beautiful night to share. Uh, I learned so much from all of you um, and it helped me to move forward. Jamie, your, your sharing really, really beautiful. Uh, Annika, really want to try your, wanna, really want to try your cooking as well. And Pei, yes, I want to see your work as well. It's very interesting and very have a deep, uh, deep emotion inside. My dear brother Papte, thank you for always supporting me. I know you were there and I am so happy. And my last word is don't forget to breathe. Let's breathe in and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out. Whenever we possible, let's 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 keep on practice breathing until we become a professional breather. Thank you. Thanks everybody for your sharing and being here, making the time. Uh, Jess, also wonderful how you uh, got everybody to get together. And uh, um, yeah, I hope to see all of you sometime again. Have a, a nice weekend. Okay, let's formally close the session with the sound of the bell.